Hey, it's Dr. Berg, and we're going to answer another question here. Dr. Berg, what do you think is going to be the next superfood? Okay, so, all right, so I've talked in many of the other videos about superfoods like cruciferous and kale and wheatgrass juice and all that, but I believe that there's another food that is going to be very popular. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the top of the list, but it's definitely loaded with nutrition, okay? This food that has tons of vitamin A, so it's almost comparable with kale, believe it or not, but it's a unique type of vitamin A. Um, it's an animal source, and it has no um, irritation of your liver or gallbladder, so it's totally fine. And it has a load of vitamin D, right, vitamin D, to help with um, your bones and calcium transportation. And a lot of people are low in vitamin D, by the way, and vitamin E and vitamin F. Now, you probably haven't heard of vitamin F, but vitamin F is like the reciprocal hormone to vitamin D. They work together. So without vitamin F, you may have more viruses coming out of remission. If you get sunburn, it's hard to get rid of the sunburn. So this food I'm going to tell you about will really help to protect against the sun rays and, and radiation. Uh, and vitamin K2. Now, what is vitamin K2? That is a type of um, K, vitamin K, that is really good for your bones and your teeth to prevent dental cavities. It has lecithin, which is the antidote to cholesterol. It actually will not increase your cholesterol because it has the antidote to cholesterol. It has selenium, that's a trace mineral, and iodine, which is very, very important, and omega-3 and omega-6 fats, and medium chain triglyceride fats. Now, what does that mean? It means that it's a healthy fat that does not convert to fat. It doesn't make you fat. And can you guess what food this is? Butter. That's right. Now, butter, you've been taught that butter is bad for you and it's going to clog your arteries, right? In fact, I was the guy originally telling people to avoid saturated fats because it's going to destroy your liver, but in reality, there is no study right now that says that consuming butter will in any shape or form increase the clogging of your arteries, okay? If you can show me one, I will be glad to look at it, but you will not find one. But someday I'm going to find out who they is who are pr pushing this out. I think they came out with margarine and then basically they pushed butter down, but butter has been used for a long time. Um, I like this one called Kerrygold. You can get this at the grocery store. It's an Irish butter, and the reason I like it is because from grass-fed cows. It's amazingly delicious. Um, so you can consume butter, all right? And it has, it's one of the few foods that has lauric acid. Lauric acid is anti-tumor, anti-cancer. It's good for weight loss and metabolism. The only other food that lauric acid is in is coconut oil and breast milk. So you have a choice, butter, coconut oil, or breast milk. I don't know where you're going to find the breast milk, but let's stick with the butter or coconut oil. Um, so it has all these great things. It has all these fat soluble vitamins, and it doesn't turn into adipose tissue. It doesn't clog your arteries, and it's actually easy to digest because it bypasses the, li the liver and the gallbladder. It doesn't strain the gallbladder like other types of fats, like, believe it or not, unsaturated fat fats, like olive oil is harder to digest than butter. So I consume a lot of kale, and I will sometimes just take a teaspoon of butter, and I'll take that in the evening, and I find it really helps my sleep because it actually enhances the absorption of calcium from the vitamin D and the vitamin F. So you, I suggest you can cook with it, put it on your vegetables, but don't be afraid to consume butter, real butter, organic, hormone-free, or this stuff right here, which is grass-fed, okay? So check it out, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.